It's always a pleasure to talk each year about the Jewish International Film Festival. And it's coming up uh, again this year on the 2nd of March to the 3rd of April in Melbourne, but also in a number of cities around Australia. So it's great to see it diversifying. And it's always a pleasure to speak to the director of the uh, Jewish International Film Festival, Eddie Tamir. Eddie, welcome again to Movie Metropolis. Hey, Peter. Thanks for uh, being interested. I always am. Uh, tell me, Eddie, first of all, you've got 55 films in the program. Um, with the pandemic and with uh, uh, film production being, um, uh, I suppose, affected by what's been happening, how uh, much of a challenge was it for you to source the films that are in the festival? Um, surprisingly um, easy in terms of number of films and quality of films. Um, I guess filmmaking is, uh, you know, a long process. And so for something to come out, it means that it's probably, you know, shot and being edited a year prior or two years prior, who knows? Mm. Um, but it seems even in Victoria, um, throughout the pandemic, there were special exemptions for filmmaking. Um, because of the cultural imperative. So even when we were in full lockdown, construction work was allowed to proceed and filmmaking was allowed to proceed. <laughs> so um, I suppose around the world, probably a similar imperative, a cultural imperative to keep the, um, keep the wills of cultural expression um, churning out, doing their thing. So yeah, plenty of films, plenty of great films. And that's great to see because uh, looking at the program, it, it looks like, again, another terrific program. Let's first of all mention that you have two Australian films uh, in the program, The Narrow Bridge and Mother Mountain. Yeah, yeah, which is, uh, I guess, unusual. Um, obviously, the, I guess, production output of Australia in general is relatively small compared to the French or the German, you know, output, for example, and clearly the American. Uh, yeah, so it's fantastic. One feature film, one doc, both great films. Um, the feature film is Mother Mountain, and it's got a, a Jewish um, and Australian Indigenous uh, cross-cultural storyline running through it. Um, so it's pretty exotic, I suppose. And uh, first-time director, Selena Stang, who is also a uh, commercials director, and she does a great job. And the documentary Narrow Bridge, also by a first-time director, Esther Takach. And interestingly, um, it is uh, a story-based, uh, you know, Israeli-Palestinian um, uh, canvas. And it's about a Palestinian father and an Israeli-Jewish father whose children were victims of the conflict. And it's about their um, attempt to heal themselves, heal each other, and I suppose heal the world and move them to a more uh, peaceful place. And uh, Esther um, is an Australian filmmaker and she spent a lot of time in Israel. She's a psychologist. Um, and uh, yeah, fantastic to be uh, representing and premiering that film too. Excellent. Look forward to seeing both of those films. Now, the opening night film, and I must admit, I'm not so familiar with uh, the person, uh, but Simone Vale, a woman of the century. Yep. So, yeah, it's interesting about her stature and, you know, whether she's in the zeitgeist or not. Clearly in Europe, she is absolutely, everyone knows the story of the late Simone Vale. Um, Holocaust survivor, lawyer, human rights activist, um, member of parliament in France, instrumental in changing French law um, to allow abortion in France, uh, and then one of the first presidents of the European Union. So a colossal personality. Um, so I guess comparable to, the, I guess, the RBG or Ruth Bader Ginsburg of America, She's uh, in that vein of inspiring, groundbreaking um, women. Look forward to seeing that. It sounds really interesting. Um, and um, it, it, it's directed by uh, um, Olivia Dahan, who did um, Ma Vie en Rose, ah. the uh, story. 
So, um, you know, high caliber French film. We have an amazing cluster of French films, actually. I've noticed we have, that, We're premiering yeah. five French, French films in the program, and they're all, uh, all very different. And uh, it's an unusually big cluster for us. Well, speaking then of the French films, Man in the Basement with uh, Francois Cluzet sounds like a really interesting story. Yep, yep. Like it, it moves um, into, I guess, a suspense thriller kind of mode. Um, and it's based on a story about a, a Jewish um, guy married. Uh, he's got an apartment in France, in Paris. Once they own the basement, they want to rent it out because of various financial reasons and they uh, rent it out to a very unusual character um, who uh, e emerges um, to be quite um, a serious anti-Semite and co conspiracy theorist and uh, they need to deal with that as well as French law um, and how to cope with an absolutely escalating um, dramatic situation. Mm, sounds really interesting. I mean, obviously all the films do um, and look forward to seeing them. Uh, a few years ago at the, at the Munich Film Festival, I had the pleasure of meeting Sergei Lozitsa. Uh, at that time, he had directed Don Bass. But uh, last year, I was able to see another one of his films, Babi Yar Context. And I'm so pleased that it's playing in the festival. Yeah, what a film. Um... Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen a lot of docos and a lot of, lot of Holocaust-themed docos, obviously. Um, but this one is outstanding. And the combination of, you know, the unusual footage and I guess the, 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 the cultural references of the time interplaying with the Babi Yar story makes it a really unique, um, compelling uh, storytelling. It's a terrific film, and uh, certainly I urge people to uh, to see it. Um, uh, and uh, also, when I was in uh, Germany a few years ago, I was able to go to Wannsee uh, and to have a look at the uh, area, buildings, etc., cetera, um, where the conference was held, which determined the final solution. And uh, it, I'm looking forward to seeing the film, The Conference. Yep, yep. And it is um, the 80th year since that dastardly event. And it is, um, yeah, obviously the film, the conference is coming out um, because of that, and you know, th that uh, mark of 80 years. And it is not a documentary, um, easy to imagine it would be. It's a feature film, mm -hmm. very high quality, amazing production values, and really goes into this, the, this bunch of, you know, basic, you know, military gangsters who just meet in this incredible um, venue and eat and drink to their heart's content and uh, basically design and agree on the uh, final solution uh, to exterminate all the Jewish people of Europe. So uh, it's, you know, both the combination of the mundane and the horrifying, I suppose, um, in relation to that event, and it's very well done. Yes, I'm familiar with the director, Matty Gashonik, so uh, I'm sure it would be a, a high quality film. Look forward to yes. seeing that. Now, just as a contrast, you have a, a documentary about Leonard Cohen called Hallelujah. Yeah, fantastic new documentary. Uh, there, are, you know, he, he uh, is obviously in the zeitgeist in the Anglo world um since his passing a few years ago and a, a few films features and docs have come out this one is pretty special it, i guess it 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 tracks arguably his most iconic song hallelujah and goes into that song the creation of that song um his relationship leonard Cohen's relationship to his jewish identity in relation to the song all of <laughs> many of the famous cover versions of that song. And I guess its impact um, and resonance um, on society through the years. So uh, yeah, fantastic film. Sounds great. Uh, always good to see Billy Crystal uh, in a film. And I notice he's paired up with Tiffany Haddish in a film called Here Today. Yeah, yes. Um, 
So Billy Crystal uh, hasn't made a film for a while. He's directed this as well as acting in it. Uh, so it is definitely compelling from that point of view. And it's fantastic, you know, entertaining, moving, funny. Um, the trailer, you know, you've probably watched, uh, very um, entertaining and interesting. And he plays pretty much a world that he knows, which is a comedy writer, um, an aging comedy writer at that, um, who's actually suffering from memory loss uh, at the same time that he's trying to pull off a brand new uh, comedic show. Uh, so that's a drama in his life. And then he meets Tiffany Haddish and have a very unusual um, relationship, um, really looking after each other, basically. Uh, and it uh, follows that um, relationship and his personal um, dramatic story. Okay, sounds great. Now, I noticed you, you're featuring uh, a film called Greener Pastures, uh, which mm. sounds like a really interesting story. Yeah, so, you know, we obviously have the, uh, the critics' favourites and the major film festival, um, you know, hits. And we also have, I guess, the populist um, hits as well, the crowd pleases and Greener Pastures is one of those. Um, in the top couple of uh, highest grossing box office films in Israel last year. Uh, and it is um, basically the setup is a, a um, an older gentleman is basically uh, his children have sold his house and put him in an old, um, in a retirement village, much to his um, distress and uh, chagrin. And he is very unhappy there, but he notices that everyone else is very, very happy. Uh, and he finds out that the secret to that happiness is not only community, uh, but also medical marijuana. Uh, which has been basically prescribed to everybody who wants it in the retirement village. And he decides that he wants to get his house back. So he schemes with all the people in the retirement village to uh, uh, basically donate um, medical cannabis to a new venture, a joint venture between all of them and sell it on the street at street value. So it's got a bit of a comedy caper element to it, but it's also got that, I guess, very you know, arguably an Israeli sort of Jewish authenticity on family relationships. Um, and it's still kind of very real and grounded and quite moving at the same time. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Now, I always enjoy um, older films, historic films, and each year uh, or just about each year, you program a Yiddish film, which is fantastic. Uh, and this one by Edgar G. Ulmer, who is uh, probably better known in Hollywood for other films, but The Light Ahead uh, from 1939 sounds a very interesting film. Yeah, yeah we, love, we love these and, um, you know, th this whole genre of film and, and it, they really need to be on the big screen. Uh, and the, um, the um, well, it used to be YIVO, but the uh, Institute for, for Yiddish Film um, in America basically restores every few years um, an old Yiddish classic. And so these are, this is a restored print. That's why uh, really compelling to see it on the big screen. Hmm. And it has got incredible drama slash melodrama in it. And uh, it's really, you know, I really enjoyed it myself and highly recommend it. Okay, and uh, my attention was also drawn to a Czech film from 1949 that you're screening called Distant Journey. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, um, very interesting film in the, the Holocaust film oeuvre. Um, unfortunately, there is a Holocaust film oeuvre. Um, it is unusual, I guess, in many ways. One is um, it was made in 1949. So one is one of the first Holocaust themed feature films made after the Holocaust and shot and filmed in Theresienstadt. Um, and it, as well as that kind of incredible sort of spine chilling reality to be shooting there, you know, pretty much three or four years after the war. Mm. Um, it actually uses, even though it is a feature film, it uses archival footage 
um, of Holocaust scenes and reality and intermingles them with the dramatic uh, narrative. So really unusual, really special, and uh, again, highly recommended. Sure, uh, I look forward to it. And speaking of Czech films, a film that I've been waiting to see, and I'm so glad you've programmed it, is a, a film called Painted Bird, which I, I've heard is quite a challenging film. Yep, so Jersey Kaczynski, um, who wrote Being There, um, wrote Painted Bird. Um, it is a book of some controversy in terms of his experience and, you know, and, and, and how much is authentic and, and how much is arguably um, fictionalized, but regardless, amazing story, amazing film, uh, as, as confronting and provocative an experience as, as, as you can get from a film um, about a, a Jewish boy basically on the run um, during the Second World War, which is based on Jersey Kaczynski's um, personal experience. It's got Harvey Keitel and Stellan Skarsgård in it. And um, it is a uh, Czech, Ukrainian, Slovakian co-production um, with many languages, obviously, including Czech. Uh, and um, yeah, we're really proud to be presenting it. Oh, I'm so glad you are. That's, that sounds great. Now, again, as a contrast, uh, a documentary about Sigmund Freud called uh, yeah. Jew Without God. That sounds really interesting. <laughs> yes. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of a curio, this film. Um, it's a French production. So, you know, already it's, it's like a, it, it's sort of a strange perspective, I suppose, to have a, a French production of a Sigmund Freud documentary. Um, but I found it really interesting. I did some psychology study when I was at university and uh, I was for better or worse um, into the, uh, the Freudian psychoanalytic thing. Um, and it, it takes um, personal letters of Freud and, um, and it, and it, talk, and it connects to his Jewish roots. Uh, and obviously uh, that's a very interesting journey because uh, Moses and monotheism and, you know, he obviously was grappling with Jewish identity and, and religion and, you know, personal psychology. Um, so it's um, narrated by his daughter, Anna Freud. And the letters um, uh, depict the family's deportation from Austria and their experience as exiles in the new home in London. Uh, and this is all done through personal letters being narrated um, uh, as against some um, interesting nature um, footage. So it's a very unusual mixture of elements, um, but anyone into Freud uh, uh, would be uh, right at home. Oh, well, again, sounds good. And I, I know there's a little bit of controversy associated with uh, this next documentary um, in terms of the uh, some authenticity issues, I think. Speer goes to Hollywood. Yeah. So, um, well, we'll get to the authenticity question, but the, the film is excellent and, uh, you know, Albert Speer was one of the um, major, um, I guess, characters and operators in the Nazi story um, of the Second World War. Uh, architect, you know, designed um, for Hitler under Hitler's instructions, grand buildings, um, grand um, boulevards and stadiums that celebrated, you know, the Nazi you know, propaganda machine and the marching soldiers and the whole um, bizarre extravagance of the whole um, story. Um, and then he also was involved in running um, 12 million slaves, uh, basically labor slaves, um, to uh, work for the, 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 the Nazi machine. So you would think that this sort of character, this, this guy would basically be in such disrepute after the war that he would be uh, condemned, um, trialed, 
uh, court-martialed uh, and faced real justice. But incredibly, he escaped all that uh, and basically managed to whitewash his reputation to the extent that in the 70s, Hollywood um, wanted to make a movie about him um, and I guess celebrate him in some bizarre way. Um, and so this film deals with him, uh, deals with a process of the development of that film, which got very, very advanced. And there's tapes um, between him and the director um, and the screenwriter of the film, Andrew Birkin. Uh, and these, these tapes are the ones in question in terms of authenticity. So the story is not um, controversial or in question, but the actual use of the tapes that apparently, according to, to the director, were in such bad or in such disrepair that she was required to use transcripts to re-record them with actors. So um, Vanessa um, Lapa, the director, argues that they're absolutely um, authentic to the original script, but voiced by actors. And other people have said, well, you can't do that in a documentary. And that's where the controversy lies. Okay, okay. Well, uh, people should see it and uh, make up their own mind, but it, it, it still sounds very, very interesting. And I noticed a, a film about Amos Oz, um, Fourth Window. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, world famous, you know, author. Hmm. Um, Amos Oz is really, uh, you know, clearly one of the great characters and authors um, in Israeli literature. Uh, and is definitely up there as the most um, read of all time. Um, so really um, made by a great director called Yair Kedar, who's done a series called The Hebrews, very high quality um, documentary maker. Um, and it really um, follows um, conversations with him and his biographer and reveals um, elements about Amosor's that really um, have not really been um, put into a film until now. Uh, since his death, um, one of his daughters has presented him as uh, physically and, and mentally violent. Um, he actually addresses that in this film uh, uh, with his biographer and talks about his perspective on it and gives his version and, and his, uh, goes through his attempts to reach out to that daughter. Um, and so a lot of interesting personal, uh, as well as, I guess, literally literary merit to the film because it presents a lot of um, excerpts from his books um, to, I guess, just connect his personal journey um, to his literature. Very good. Uh, again, sounds sounds great. Now, a, a film title that surprised me, and uh, I have vague memories of uh, Tiny Tim <laughs> going back many years when he was on Laugh-In and so on, but you've got a documentary about him called King for a Day. Uh, yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, who, who knew that uh, he was Jewish? Yeah. I didn't really know, but uh, <laughs> Jewish mother. Um, so fulfills all those criteria yeah. uh, and what a character and, and how far before his time. Uh, quite, a, quite a tragic, sad story, really. Um, but he had his absolute moments of fame and incredibly, uh, you know, became world famous and, uh, you know, tiptoed through the tulips uh, through his career and painted a very interesting uh, persona. Sounds good. Sounds good. Just a couple more and then I'll uh, to round off and then you might want to mention uh, a few more films as well. But um, Red Orchestra uh, is one that struck me as being a, a very interesting film. Yeah. Um, interesting film <clears throat> because um, it explores the, the main resistance network that was operating in Nazi Germany during the war. Uh, many Jewish um, personalities uh, and uh, characters um, in that network. And it follows um, that story uh, about um, the network sharing the, um, 
this, the uh, military secrets they discover uh, with the Soviets. Uh, and a couple of uh, this, this network of the Red Orchestra has been represented in films previously. Um, so it actually shows footage from those films and it takes things a bit further and goes a bit deeper into the characters, um, the real life characters uh, in the story. Okay, okay. And I have a feeling along the same lines is a film called Plan A that stars August Deal. Yeah, well, Red Orchestra is um, a uh, documentary and yep. has those excerpts of the feature films um, to delve a bit deeper. Plan A is a, docu uh, is a feature film yep. uh, and the storyline is a true story um, but it is a fictionalized version of that true story, uh -huh. uh, which is an incredible story of um, <clears throat> Holocaust survivors who decide to stay in Europe and decide to um, seek their revenge on the German people and make a plan to poison the water of a German city. Uh, so all of that is true uh, and it's about their setup and the journey of that story and what comes to pass. Very good. And I notice you've got a, a doco on Helmut Newton who uh, photographed the stars. Yeah, yeah, we've got some great uh, cultural uh, yeah. documentaries, um, you know, in the festival, as you pointed out, from, you know, Leonard Cohen to Sol Bellow to um, Amos Oz and yes, Helmut Newton, um, legendary, um, photographer uh, and uh, yeah, just fantastic to be, um, I guess for us to be presenting these stories of, you know, very, uh, of groundbreaking Jewish um, artists. And Absolutely. So Eddie, just to round off, are there any other films? I noticed the closing night uh, is two episodes of a, a series called The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem. Yep, yep, hit, hit series, obviously Israeli TV series are just hot in general. Uh, and the Beauty Queen of Jerusalem is one of the latest uh, and hottest series uh, that's played in Israel very recently. Uh, and it tracks um, a few families between the 1920s and the 1950s um, in Palestine and Israel um, through those years and uh, particularly focuses on uh, a Sephardi and an Ashkenazi family and uh, explores the uh, the various um, dramas and melodramas emerging from each of those families and their intertwining, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's in the spirit of, of uh, you know of the 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 Spanish telenovelas, yeah. uh, so very very entertaining and very moving at the same time. Excellent. Okay, uh, that uh, that's a bit of a snapshot. Obviously, not all the films, but that's. Uh, gives people an idea of what's playing. So let's talk about website, booking tickets, everything related to that. Sure. So um, GIF, J -I -F -F .com .au, uh, for your online uh, tickets. Uh, and in Melbourne, uh, it's playing at the exclusively at the classic and Lido cinemas. So you can go to their websites as well, or just, uh, drop in, pick up a physical program, say good day, and the staff will uh, take you through um, the, the ticket booking process face-to-face. -face. And plus screening at a number of other cities. You have uh, uh, the Ritz, of course, in Sydney and uh, in other places as well. Yep, definitely, uh, you know, looks like uh, there's a demand for, um, I guess, what the Jewish Film Festival is doing. Uh, yeah, we're playing Perth. Um, Canberra, Brisbane, um, Sydney, Melbourne, as you mentioned, and for the first time we're going to the Gold Coast. Uh, so yeah, it's exciting. Exactly. Jewish International Film Festival, 2nd of March to the 3rd of April, uh, especially in Melbourne. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to talk to the director of the Jewish International Film Festival, Eddie Tamir. Eddie, thank you so much for talking with me. Thanks, Peter. And as usual, see you at the movies. Absolutely. Bye-bye. See you.